Let's get right to it, guys. Q&A, how to play basketball overseas, 2021 edition. What's going on, everyone? It's your boy, Dez360, providing you with that motivational and inspirational content to help supercharge your grind, your vibe, your journey. All right, guys, so as you may or may not know, I am a former overseas basketball player. Yes, when I was 20 years old, I went overseas and did my thing in multiple countries, Philippines, Mexico, and literally made that happen without any Division I scholarship, without any Division II scholarship, without any real looks, just myself, my passion, and my belief that I wanna play at this next level. So I put the work in and I made it happen. And now I am providing everything I've learned to you in hopes that you can achieve your dreams, your goals, and your aspirations of becoming an overseas basketball player. Today, we're gonna to talk about a few things. Today, we're actually gonna cover a handful of questions that I've received pertaining to overseas basketball. And uh, I think there are, they'll be pretty beneficial. I'm just gonna go through the list and this will be our 2021 guide on overseas basketball. Make sure to comment guys, like, subscribe. I really appreciate the support. We're gonna keep this going, build our own community. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna be that resource for you and I'm in your corner as long as you're putting in the work. Because remember guys, none of this can happen if you're not physically ready, mentally ready, and in the lab constantly. So let's get right to it guys. Q&A, how to play basketball overseas. 2021 edition. All right, so question number one, am I too old to play basketball overseas? That's a really good question. And the short answer is no. You're only too old if you literally think you're too old. First off, that's what I'll say. Mentally, if you're checked out, if you think, ah, I'm too, I'm too old, then teams are gonna feel that energy. Like me, for example, you know, I'm not 20 years old anymore, but if I really want to go back and play, I could do it, right? I would have to let myself know, yo, I can still do this. I feel good. I have more years in me. That's number one. Now, if we really break it down to the numbers, when I was playing professionally, I remember there were players on a team that were like 37 years old, 38 years old. Uh, I even heard about a guy that was, uh, I played with a dude, he was like 42. And he was still dunking. I was like, man, this is wild. And he was like six foot three, six foot two. And he was still dunking at, he was hustling more than us. I'm like, this guy's the real deal. So um, really the beautiful thing about playing in multiple countries overseas, um, and then you take the, the amount of games you play into consideration. So compare this to like an NBA game where they have 82 games plus playoffs, etc. Overseas games are, overseas leagues are probably anywhere between 20 to 30 games in a season, you know, and then maybe plus playoffs. So you're putting less wear and tear on your body. Um, and then that is gonna allow you to possibly prolong your career. I mean, I know a lot of overseas basketball players that don't retire um, until their late thirties. So if the question is, am I too old to play overseas basketball? I'm honestly gonna say no, unless you're like 50. Then you might be a little too, <laughs> it might be a little too late, but you could play in like the senior league and we could figure that out. Okay, the, the next question is, am I too young to play basketball overseas? That's another good question. So when I was playing on a team in Mexico, cool story is we had players that were in their mid thirties. And then we also had the juniors. We had players that were 17, 18 years old, just starting their career getting that experience. It really depends on the league you're in. For example, Luka Doncic, he was playing pro at like, what, 15 years old, right? And obviously we, we all know why. Overseas, he's amazing. NBA, he's a superstar. But what I mean is, depending on the league, they can generate and want to start uh, players at a younger age, right? In the US, I know there's like a hard cap on like 18 years old or even 19 if it's like NBA. But overseas, you can be, you know, I've heard about 15, 14 year olds playing pro. And on my team, there was a 17 year old and an 18 year old. So literally you're not too old. Um, but I would say if you're in the States or, or anywhere, you know, you ought to consider if you want to go the university route, the college basketball route, or do you want to go the other route, which is just straight up, straight going to a team. So, okay guys, next question. 
when should I start my overseas career? When should I start my overseas career? Okay, um, this is a really good question. I would honestly say you have to take multiple things into consideration. I just was talking about college and university and and that route, right? That may be more beneficial for you to get your schooling paid for, right? Um, in my case, you know, I wasn't getting those offers. I wasn't getting a scholarly, just being just plain and simple, you know? And so for me, it's like, I got approached by the Philippines and they said, hey, come out here. If you want, you can start playing for a university out here and then professional teams as well in tandem. So I was like, you know what? That makes more sense for me. And, and as a 20 year old kid, um, I've decided that's what I wanted to do. I think it really varies uh, in each case. Now, if you're like, and, and it varies, like I'm a six foot guard, you know? So for me, I'm like, well, it's better for me to get my career started overseas now. You know, it's gonna be competitive and I don't have the, the scholarship for the, for the D1 or D2. So I did that. But maybe another player who's six eight, you know, and playing and has some offers, they may want to consider it. And they may want to do the college experience for a couple years and then go overseas. So I think it's a case by case basis. And um, you just got to really think about it. When are you ready to make the jump? You know, when are you ready to live in another country? You got to ask yourself that. Hopefully you're enjoying this so far. Let's keep it going. I actually have my own course. We're going to talk about that right now. And uh, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, guys. Let's get you overseas. Overseas basketball. Living in another country and playing the game you love. This is a huge milestone for any ambitious basketball player. But where do you start and how do you get your first contract? My name is Des360 and this is how to play basketball overseas. I'm going to share with you exactly what I did to go from college bench warmer to overseas pro basketball player. Watch my full course now, only at Des360.com. Next question, where should I start my overseas career? Another really good question. So I would say this, first, you gotta see what kind of heritage you have. For me, I'm Filipino and Mexican, you know? So I knew, hey, that's probably, you know, a better place for me to start my journey is either the Philippines or in Mexico or one and then go to the other like I did, right? Because you'll have a little more opportunity, especially if you have that kind of lineage, bloodline, um, ethnicity, you know, background, ethnic background. So for me, that's where I was saying, I'm going to start. Now, if you're, if you don't, right, let's say you're just a American player or whatever, and you don't have that. Um, I had friends that went to Europe and there are so many different countries there. So for them, it was like, let me go to Europe and and just see what what opportunities arise you know because there are different countries and really the moral of this is you know there isn't a, a one particular place to start if you don't have um like a nationality or uh lineage there you know it, it's more about getting your foot in the door and once you get your foot in the door then you can go to this country and another country because it's a well-knit community people will hear about that so i would say you know don't focus too much on where uh, other than if, unless you have some like, basically some plug and lineage there. My mother's born in the Philippines, my, my father's born in Mexico. So I knew that I have those opportunities. So if your parent is born in a country, you'll probably have more opportunities there. Um, cool, so let's move on. Okay, what do I need to start getting actual interest from overseas teams? That's a really good question. That's a really good question. So honestly, there are a, a bunch of things that you need. Um, and I'm just saying you want to come correct. Remember, so many people want this spot, whether it's one, two or three spots on, on an overseas team, there are limited spots. So you want to fill that in and you want to give teams every reason why they should sign you or consider you. Uh, actually, in my, in my program, I go really in depth over an hour, literally over an hour talking about what I exactly did. So if you want to hear about that, check out my program at des-360.com. But I would honestly say, you know, it's going to be a mixture of film and you want to make sure you have the proper kind of film. And it's going to be a mixture of other documents and, you know, recommendations, a bunch of stuff. 
And uh, I think we, in my course, we really dissected and jump into that. So that's what I would recommend because, you know, if I'm going over an hour, we're really looking at the details uh, to position you for that actual interest. So, okay, next question. Should I spend my money on camps and tryouts? That's a really good question. And once again, it varies. It varies. You know, if you're looking at a camp and you don't know anybody, um, associated with that camp, right? You don't know who's throwing it. Um, literally what I mean is like personal connection, right? So for example, I have a basket, I had a basketball agent uh, and he managed, he was my agent for Mexico. And then he wanted to do a basketball camp as well. So I was like, yeah, that's cool, you know? And, and I was telling friends, hey, this might be a camp worth going to because I know the guy running it and he's a credible source. Because a lot of these camps sometimes they already know who's getting signed or you don't know what risk you're taking. So you end up spending hundreds of dollars and you may not get the most out of it. So what I would say is I have another video, a pretty, I have another video on this channel where I spend 10 minutes talking about, okay, how to make the most out of a tryout or a camp because you, you know, just in case you don't know what you're really getting into. So uh, I would recommend watching that. Um, but I would just say, if you are going to spend, like, should you do it? Um, there is a plan. There is a plan. If you are going to spend, there's a plan that makes sure that you get the most out of it. And it's really, you know, <laughs> filming every game, not relying on them. So I talk about that in another video. Uh, that's what I have to say about that. <laughs> How long will it take for me to get my first contract? That is another good question. So look, the truth of the matter is, you never know how long it's gonna take. You can get signed quickly if you're doing your thing. Let's say you go to a camp and you and you destroy and there is there is someone in the crowd and they see you. And a week later, boom, you're in another country. Um, or vice versa, you can go to camps, you can send out videos, you can reach out and maybe it's just not your time. You know, maybe it takes a year, maybe it takes two years, right? But more importantly, what I speak about in the program and whatnot in my course is building that relationship and how to properly build a relationship with management agents, teams, and organizations. So there is no definite time. Like there is no definite time how long it will take. Um, I think it. the one thing that is kind of definite is how much work are you willing to put in and continually put in right before you hit that tipping point, which the tipping point is, hey, I'm getting looks. Hey, I might be able to decide and make decisions on where I wanna go instead of relying on someone else. So keep working on your game and uh, it'll, it'll all come through. Two more questions. What kind of shape should I be in? <laughs> I'm gonna make this quick and simple. You need to be in the best shape of your life. You gotta be ready. What if you got a phone call right now? I say that all the time. Are you ready? You can't show up. You can't say, hey, I need six weeks. Well, I will say this. I got a phone call. Two weeks later, I was in the Philippines. I got a phone call. One week later, I was in Mexico. Imagine if I wasn't ready for the opportunity. My stay wouldn't be that long. It would have been like a two week stay. It would have been a trip, just a little trip. Uh, wasting time getting there and coming back. Of course, I would have been like, man, learn from it. But why do that when you can be out there and really get the true experience? So just stay in shape. That's the one thing you really, really can control the most is the amount of work you're putting in. So I'm just gonna say it, you know, find ways to get better. Um, I'm actually gonna drop another course on that. If you guys have been requesting it, uh, and it's just train like a pro and I'm literally gonna have, it's a 14 day challenge and it's gonna break it down everything I did. And if you wanna get that grind, it'll get you right. At the end of those two weeks, you'll be like, this was a legit training camp, you know? So um, yeah, you wanna be in tip top shape, not just shooting well, you wanna be able to defend well, you need to be able to be super conditioned. So if you're not jogging, running, sprinting, you need to be on that before any of these calls and interactions take place, you know, unless you're already proven, then you have your own strategy in your camp and to get your next contract, etc. Last question, how much money will I make as an overseas basketball player? Great question, very important question because you're putting in so much time, effort, and you're sacrificing to, to get this opportunity and make it happen. And while you're overseas, you're sacrificing. But the truth of the matter is, it varies per case again. You never know. Like I said, I've seen people go play for free. Honestly, just, just being honest, 
I've seen people go pay and get, play and get paid $400 a month. I've seen contracts go out for $1,000 a month. You know, I honestly was getting $2,500, $3,000 a month untaxed, right? Rookie contracts, early contracts, but building on that. Now, the other opportunities, I have friends that make $15,000, $20,000 a month, right? And more because then they have endorsements, brand endorsements, sponsorships from, you know, country uh, brands in that country. And that's the opportunity that's there. So you really have to consider that. But honestly, you got to get your you got to get out there. You got to ball and do your thing, because I always say if you're like a hot commodity, if you're killing it. If you're a necessity. If they're like, we can't let this person go. They will pay you, you know, but it takes time. You got to build that up. And, uh, you know, that's why I'm sharing this information. Everyone thinks you go out there and you're getting millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars. That's not necessarily the case unless you are literally directly connected um, or an NBA bounce back coming in and out of the NBA. Every case is different. A lot of these really good, I, I know a lot of D1 players that went to go play for a thousand bucks, a couple thousand. But over years, two, three years of doing so, now they can ask for double that, triple that, and, and not more. And they get brand sponsorships. There's so many things, guys. So that's our 2021, you know, kickstart to uh, how to play basketball overseas. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If there are any other questions, drop a comment. You know, as I mentioned, we're building this community. Every week I'm posting stuff about overseas basketball. And it's really for your benefit to see, you know, because when I was in that position, in your position right now, I really wanted some guidance and I didn't have that. I had to go and figure things out and learn the hard way. And if I could just spread some of that to you and the good, the good stuff, um, but the honest stuff, the honest truth, it, it can assist your journey and uh, hopefully you can get that contract. So yeah, guys, thanks a lot. Des360, former overseas pro hooper. If you haven't seen my videos, check them out. I got tutorials, I got trick shots, I got uh, pickup games, we got reacts. It's everything, all things basketball. Let's do it. See y'all next time. Thank you for watching. Peace.